Wiz and I started talking about it. You know, he kept calling me back to come work with him. And, uh, you know, me and him started talking about how he wants to make himself sound and like his goals and like what he's looking to get through the music, which was all about the feeling, you know, and all about that. And so my job was more so how do I take this and enhance it without changing it, without losing what makes it special? You know what I mean? Which is a journey. A lot of failing, you know, involved with it. A lot of whiz being like, nah, bro, this ain't it. And me getting frustrated as hell, you know, thinking that I know the best because I was with Dave Pintado. How the fuck are you going to tell me any different? You know what I mean? Sure. But I didn't say that. I suppressed my ego and I just kept pushing until I, you know, pleased him until he was like, yo, this is it. Dope dialogue. So, like, one of the major gems on your resume is working with WizKid. So, like, how did you guys meet? And also, how did you guys lock in professionally? Like, what was it about that connection when you guys first met that led to being, you know, developing a professional relationship? Yeah. Um, so, like, at that point, I wasn't producing any Afrobeat music. And I wasn't really even, like, really up to speed on it at all either, you know? But when I did meet him, it was at Record Plant. They needed an engineer. They even told me his name was Wiz the Kid. So I'm driving over there looking up on Google who Wiz the Kid is and I can't find <laughs> nothing. And I'm like, damn, I have no idea what's going on. So like I literally walked in just completely just dry. I had no idea what, what it was, you know? Cool, meet him, whatever. He starts playing some stuff and I'm listening to it and I'm like, damn, this kind of sounds a little familiar to me because of my Brazilian roots, right? A lot of the patterns and a lot of like the percussion, heavy drums, heavy. If you go to Brazil, man, like in like their parties their festivals and shit like that it's the same thing it's like heavy sure. drums you know what i mean like it's heavy percussion elements and it really comes from africa for sure you know but i wasn't even hit to that so kind of working with wiz and like doing it for so long and having these conversations with him i started to learn about my own culture started to learn where all this stuff came from and like things that i didn't even know what they were you know why they were like that in the first place you know um yeah and then when i started pretty much just hearing all this stuff uh, I had just yeah I was still kind of at the tail end of working with Pensado so like I knew how things could go from not sounding so great to sounding like amazing because Dave is obviously the goat and then I started listening to this music that had so much feeling in it but just didn't have you know like the level of sonics that you would say like an industry standard would be here in America you know and so I really got super interested in it. And, you know, Wiz and I started talking about it. You know, he kept calling me back to come work with him. And, uh, you know, me and him started talking about how he wants to make himself sound and like his goals and like what he's looking to get through the music, which was all about the feeling, you know, and all about that. And so my job was more so how do I take this and enhance it without changing it, without losing what makes it special? You know what I mean? Which is a journey. And sure. we tried and tried and tried and tried until we figured it out, you know, and it wasn't the smoothest path, you know, for sure. <laughs> There's a lot of try or a lot, a lot of trying, a lot of uh, trial and error, a lot of failing, you know, involved with it. A lot of whiz being like, nah, bro, this ain't it. And me getting frustrated as hell, you know, thinking that I know the best because I was with Dave Pintado. How the fuck are you going to tell me any different? You know what I mean? Sure. But I didn't say that. I suppressed my ego and I just kept pushing until I, you know, pleased him until he was like, yo, this is it. And then looking back on it, I'm like, damn, he's right. You know what I mean? I was sucking all the life out of it, just making it shiny. For sure. You know what I mean? He pushed me to keep the life on it and make it shiny. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So obviously I owe a lot to him as well. You know, he gave me a big opportunity and allowed me to like develop my skills as well as, you know, prove myself at the same time. So gotcha. it was cool. Yeah, it was dope. So you don't got to give the whole, you know, recipe, like the Krabby Patty formula or anything, but like what's your, <laughs> what's one key component to bring in that genre of music alive like make sure you maintain and rest not restore but maintain that feeling and enhance it i mean i wish there was a Krabby patty formula i could give you because i probably would have marketed it and sold it 100 million times by now you know for sure but unfortunately there's not man like every song is made differently everything is you know um recorded in a different place with different equipment different you know whatever different producers different DAWs you know like everything just sounds so different so I kind of just have to take it on like a song you know song by song kind of basis and 
I know this is gonna sound crazy and like, you know, it's like, oh man, like tell us the sauce, bro. But like the sauce is close your eyes and figure it the fuck out. You know For what sure. I mean? Like there's no like way around it. Like I wish there was like, oh, yo, if you use this plugin, like it would help. I could tell you like, okay, cool. Like if I have a vocal that's not super dynamic, I'll use like an LA two-way compressor. Or if I have one that's like super dynamic, I need it to be a little more aggressive. I'll use an 1176, cool every song's different, you For know sure. what I mean? Sometimes I might have to use one on the hook, one on the verse, you know what I mean? There's not like a one thing that makes it good, you know? For it's sure. really just about what is the outcome of this? That little MP3, when I press play on it, does it give me what I need, you know what I mean? And also when I go play, let's say Dua Lipa, an international superstar, or Bad Bunny, an international superstar, or Drake, you know what I mean? Amongst this song, how does it feel? I need my shit to go up, not down. You know, sure. that's what I focus on. Like I make sure that I give myself the real information of what's going on out in the world. You know, I go to the clubs and I listen to songs and I say, man, that one song, as soon as he put that song on, the party went crazy. I'll remember that song, come back to the studio, put it in my metric AB and then compare it to the song that I'm working on. If my shit don't feel the way that song felt because I know when I was tipsy at that club and shit turned up when that song came up i need my song to give everybody that same feeling you know for sure so like it's like a mental note come back compare it to your shit be honest with yourself about it you know 99 percent of the time if you're wholeheartedly honest with yourself you're gonna realize okay cool i need to work on this a little more you know and that direct comparison to something will let you know what you need to work on whether it's your bass your vocals your drums your music if does the song suck at all you know what i mean like Generally, if you're honest with yourself, that'll give you the answers you're looking for. Got you. So everybody come to Joy to get that sound right. That's like <laughs> dope play, you know? <laughs> so, like, it's dope seeing your journey because, like, it's like now seeing your reach is global. So, you know, you work with artists in America, Africa, and also the UK. So what was it like working with UK legends and, you know, like Skepta, KSI, Dave, and Stormzy? How did you land those opportunities? Yeah, I mean, the first one started with Wiz. It was, uh, well, actually, P2J, you know? I met P2J through working with Wiz, and then P2J produced a song for Dave that was featuring Wiz. I did the song, then they ended up giving me the whole album, which then led to the album being successful and then other people kind of finding out and then people being like, oh, who mixed it? Which led me to doing, you know, other work in London, which caught the attention of, you know, Stormzy's camp, same thing. They gave me one song ended up giving me a couple other ones. I ended up doing, I think, like 70% of the album. You know, now I'm working on some other big ones out there that I can't talk about just yet, but they'll be crazy, soon come. <laughs> yeah, which is dope, man, you know? I don't do any marketing, no advertising. You know, my, my whole advertisement is word of mouth, you know? I want people to go talk about it because they're excited about it, not because they're paid to do so, you sure. know? And that formula has worked for me but it took a while, you know what I mean? I had to make sure that the stuff that I was doing was worth talking about, you know, sure. and, and that it was worth being brought up in a room full of, you know, legendary people or whatever the case may be, you know? So these are legendary artists, man. For I mean, sure. like Stormzy, like I never in a million years thought I'd work on his album, you know? Sure. I was just a fan of it, like Dave as well. Like I listened Skepta to his, too. Bro, For Skepta, sure. like, I mean, the day I met Skepta, I thought he wanted to murder me and then like, you know like an hour Why? into the session she's like very serious dude it Got was like you. four o'clock in the morning when he pulled up like everybody's tired you know and then like we were working and like i did one thing and like he was like yo bro like that shit was fire fam he like just turned up and he was just like super cool and shit you know like i actually get to meet these people and like hang out a little bit which is cool you know and like get the actual like i mean whiskey man like i can't thank him enough because like he's actually from being around him and his friends and shit like that like I get to actually soak up the culture, you know what I mean? Like, sure. what are you guys listening to when you're hanging out? You know what I mean? Like, it's not just like, what are you working on? Like, I'm actually getting to experience it. Like, they were making me eat their jollof rice and like, you know, their big fish and you know, like all kinds of shit, which like, you kind of need, you know what For I sure. mean? Like, it's part of the culture. For sure. So, yeah. And it's like, you're building real camaraderie with these people. It's not like, you know, transactional you're, you're eating with them you're sharing yeah. laughs like you're some more than others visions. you know for sure for sure it's a balance for you sure know? like i with with certain certain one of them i haven't even like talked directly to them you know which is cool that's how you want to run it you know for what sure. i mean all good no problem eventually every single one of them just want to hit me up and be like 
yo, bro, let's just work directly because this telephone game is too much. You know sure. what I mean? It's too many people involved in between the middle. So that's how I prefer to work too. You know? Got you. 